Thanks for joining me for the video track today. So to create a video, we're going to go up to create a project over here on the left hand side. And we're going to select video. Now Spark does try to kind of guide you through the storytelling process. So you can start by giving your presentation a title. I'm going to call this one Panda Party. And I can select a template for what kind of video I'm going to be creating. I think I'm going to go ahead and select create a lesson. And thank you Adobe Spark for showing me the tutorial in my tutorial video. Good times. Okay, so here is what we start with. Spark, since I picked a lesson type, it gives me kind of a guided idea of what might be on each video slide. But you see that these words don't have any kind of correlation to what is on the screen. I can really put whatever I want. It just kind of helps guide me through the process of creating a video. But I'm going to go ahead and close that tutorial for now, since we're going to do this our own way. Now, before we get started adding content to our slides, as part of the video, we're going to choose our theme which happens up here in the right hand corner. Now if you've used PowerPoint before, you're probably familiar with the idea of a theme. It's a color palette and a text type and all of those things put together to create a consistent format that you'll see throughout your video. What's really great about Spark is it puts these together for you. It automatically adds transitions. It sets a consistent text and it sets a consistent color scheme. The bad part about Spark is that it doesn't let you customize as much as you might want to. What's great about that is it keeps you from making horrible color mistakes and using lots of different fonts. And it keeps your themes consistent, but it does take some of that flexibility away from making all of those minor changes yourself. However, when you click on each theme, it does give you some color variation options. So you do have some flexibility to make the video your own. You know, I think I like this nice bright green, this nice bold text. And as you click on them, you can definitely see them down here across the bottom in our preview slides. Now that I have selected my theme, I'm going to go back to layout. Up here at the top, so you can see the different sorts of slides I can make. Now, just like you would in PowerPoint, you can select different types of slides for building out your video. Full screen is what it defaults to here. Split screen gives you that half and half with options to add text or videos or photos on each side. A caption option to do text and images. And a title screen with room for title and subtitle. Since this is my first slide, I'm going to go ahead and pick the title and subtitle options. So now that I have picked the type of slide that I want, I'm going to look for these plus buttons to add material to my slides. So up here is where we'll add the background. I'm going to click on photo for this one. I can upload a photo if I have one in mind already. I can also search for free photos using Adobe search tool. And let's go ahead and do that now. 
I'm going to look for a panda. I want to look for one that looks like he's having a good time. How about this buddy right here? Very cute. He looks like he is the life of the party. So I'll click here for my title and a party. And my subtitle, Dance the Night. away. And up here I don't have a lot of text options but I can decrease or increase the size of this text if I want to. I can also pick it up and drag it if I would like to change where it is on the screen. But it does give me this nice set of lines to line my text up and have it nice and centered. Perfect! So my title screen, I can see from down here, will last exactly four seconds. And if I click on that, I can extend or decrease the amount of time I want my title screen to last. And I can do that with each and every one of my slides that I create. I can also record directly into the slide. Let's go ahead and do that on the second slide. I'm going to go to this one here. If I were actually following their tips, that would be helpful. So this is a full screen slide. And this time, let's go ahead and add a video. Now, when you add a video to Spark, you actually don't have the option to look for Creative Commons videos or anything on YouTube. You have to upload a video. I've already pre-selected one here, so let's take a look at this. I just took this nice shot of a waterfall. I can pick out a section of time, how much I want this video to show. Let's say about six seconds. Four, five, six. I'll hit save up here in the upper corner. And we'll wait for it to cut that part of my video out to be the background of this slide. Well, it's thinking. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good day. Don't give up. I'm right there with you. I'm not giving up. Beautiful. So now I can either add text or an icon to this page. Let's go ahead and add some text. Great. Party. Location. And I kind of want that all to fit on one line, so I'll do that minus button until we can get that there. Perfect. And now if I click out of it, I can move this text to line up down here at the bottom. Now I have six seconds on the slide so I can record a message here to be part of this slide. If I hold this down, it'll record. Party, party, party. And if I didn't like that, I can re-record over it. Just have to hold down that button. Let's go to the next slide. For this one, let's go ahead and use the split screen. Let's go ahead and use the icon because we've added a photo, we've added text before, and we've added a video to the background. So let's go ahead and add an icon. Now the icons we can search for, and I have searched for Panda previously in my pictures, so it brings that right over here. Oh, this guy looks like he's having a good time. This looks like a very good party panda. Let's put one on this side as well. Let's add another icon. Let's search for party in our icons. I, I like the party hat. 
I like the idea of a panda in a party hat. That makes me happy. Very cute. Now this is only going to last two seconds. So I can extend the amount of time I want that to last. Great. And for our final slide, let's go ahead and use that caption because we have not used that yet. We've used our title screen as our first slide. Our second one was the full screen. This will be our caption. And there was our split screen. So let's add a photo. All right, I like balloons, so let's go ahead and add some balloons here. And we'll go ahead and add our caption text. How about cake? Anyone? And we can see that our caption text is different from our, when we did full screen and we added text to that, it comes out a little differently. So that's four slides. It loaded a few more in here in our sample than we needed, so I'm going to go ahead and delete these extra because we've done what we needed to to look at some examples. But I also have a credits page, and it automatically gives credit for the photos and things that you add that you can search for in Spark. The video here. I don't have automatic credits for because that's something I uploaded. So I can add my own credit in here. Waterfall video from Pexels. And if you're not familiar with Creative Commons and videos and where you can find resources like free images, and free stock footage. I'll go ahead and link to that in our description below, along with more information about copyright and things that you should know before using someone else's work on the internet. So now I have created this very short, very informative video. I'm sure any of you would be proud to put this in your class. Oh, wait! We are missing one very important thing. Something very important that can tie your entire video together is adding some background music. It adds a lot of professionalism and it can really bring your entire video together. And luckily, built right into Spark is a music option. They have some free music that you can use. You can also add your own if you'd like to upload something. And again, I'll link to some Creative Commons licensed music and stock footage and photo sites that you can definitely check out and use. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and pick something from Spark today, though. It has these nice categories of thoughtful or uplifting. I think I'll try this one. And now that we've made this final selection, I'm going to go ahead and preview my video. I pull this down to record. Party, party, party. Beautiful. I love everything about it. I'll go ahead and close the preview. Now, if I'm just sending this out as a link to for people to view, I can go to Share and Publish. I can give it a title. I can set myself as the author. I can turn that off. I can give it a category. And I can create a link that I can then share to my students or my colleagues or my friends so that they can view this video. And the nice thing about using the link is that if I make updates or changes to this video, that link will automatically have those updates. Oh, 
Oh, it's thinking so hard. You can do it, Spark. Almost there. And there it is. So now I have this link that I can then share out to anyone that I would like to be able to see it. Or if I want to have a copy that I can save to my personal hard drive or I want to be able to upload it to YouTube, I can use that download option and I can download this video so that I can upload it to the video sharing medium of my choice. That about covers everything that we need for making a video with Adobe Spark. I hope this was really helpful to you, but if you have questions, please leave a comment below. We do monitor those and we'll answer questions right here on our channel. If there's something else that you'd like to see, we'd love to hear those comments as well. So please join us again for other helpful Spark tutorials and other great video content coming to you from the Lone Star College North Harris Library.